the starting point of your surgery when they say attention and you hold your legs you have made yourself a soldier then i said now i know you want me to get saved so i am going to to get saved but give me time <laughs> can you imagine telling god if you ask him for something can you imagine him telling you give me time i praise god that i was condemned because if i wasn't condemned by man then consequently i would have been condemned by god but because of that human condemnation that led me to my salvation Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 19 to 23 talks about how there is hope beyond affliction. Now the author of Lamentations laments the entire chapter about how he has suffered, how he is in a sorry state of affairs. But towards the end he reminds us that with God there is hope. With God he, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now here at Church of Uganda Family TV we bring you programming that encourages that inspires you, that encourages you, that lets you know that even in your suffering, even in your affliction, there is hope for tomorrow and that you can be successful. Now, my story is one such program. Here we bring you discussions in which you will be encouraged and inspired. You hear stories and discussions that will point you to hope, that will strengthen you, that will inspire and encourage you. Now, my story is brought to you every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and I uh, repeat is during the week. Now, with me today, I have one doctor, oh sorry, you didn't say doctor. Straight, <laughs> Mr. John, John Magara. Yeah. Yes, so you are very welcome. It's a pleasure. Yes. So tell us about your life. Who is John Magara? John Magara, the way you are talking, is just a simple man. I live for a simple man. Although I have read books, there is nothing complicated about me. I'm John Magara, born in Urbanya, of Kashar County, of Ankori Kingdom at that time. Today, it is in Barara City. We are in Barara City. That's why I am born in 1945. Wow. wow. So I am about hit 77 years. Wow. I think this is not a joking business. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> and there are many points about that. First of all, that yeah. it's now a city, Mbara City. It is. And then uh, congratulations. I want to be like you when I grow up and also turn 77. Uh, that's a huge milestone. So, um, you told us you, you grew up in uh, and you were born in Mbara City and called the Kingdom at that time. Please share with us your family background. How were, how were you when you grew up? Did you have a very rich uh, family or it was a humble family like people like say? Mm. Now, while we call it a city now, mm. it, is a, it was a village. It is eight miles away from the actual city, mm. Mbarara town eight miles away. That is quite a village. Yeah. Uh, I'm born from a simple family. A, a, what do you call it? A, a, humble, a humble family. family. A humble family. Yeah. And by humble, uh, I am me, probably what we would call a peasant, but probably slightly above that. My father was uh, a parish chief. And during colonial days, those who were collaborators with the British, those chiefs, mm -hmm. the parish chief uh, uh, re represented mm -hmm. the colonial masters at the parish level. Mm -hmm. And the Mzungur, though he did appear there, but he was there. So my, mm -hmm. my father was that, mm -hmm. the smallest chevur chief, the parish chief. But also we did uh, coffee growing, matoke, um, some goats, some sheep. I am not a muima. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I am. My mother was an ordinary woman, mm. uh, cooking for us, looking after us. Mm. And uh, we grew up, we were many, but grew up up today, we are only six. Oh, seven. Mm. Uh, siblings, two girls, and uh, five men. 
I am the oldest. Wow. Wow. I am happy uh, uh, to, to be the oldest. Yes. And I think the youngest is 60 now. Yes. You're the heir. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how was it, um, that's such a large family first of all, so how was it growing in such a, uh, such a large family um, and being the oldest? What, did you, when did you start noticing that you had a very big responsibility on your shoulders? Okay, when we were growing up, <laughs> village life was simple at that time. Mm -hmm. We would just grow food mm -hmm. and eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <That's simple. laughs> we had, uh, we had grass such houses. Mm -hmm. We, they were there, and we, and uh, there was there was in fact at that time the environment was really real. Mm -hmm. The population was very small. I think when I was born, you get the whole of Uganda could have been two million, mm -hmm. or even less. Mm -hmm. So we are surrounded with forests. We, we have firewood. We have birds. We have butterflies. We have wow. all sorts of things. We have hyenas. Lions comes in from time to time. Buffalo. Lions. The antelopes. There was there any incidents where the yeah. lions attacked? At the time the I was born and grew up, mm -hmm. these, were, these were common features. Wow. But of course, we have the population has grown and destroyed all that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are in a different world. But I use when I, I look at that, it was mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did uh, the lions any attack your family uh, at any I, time? No, mm -hmm. they were very careful also. <laughs> <laughs> they were careful not to be injured. <laughs> they were careful, they were careful. And that is eight miles from town. Yes. You can see this, what the situation was. Wow. You would see vast of open areas. Mm -hmm. Kashari didn't have people. Mm -hmm. Kashari, what I call Kashari, that county in which Mbara is placed, mm -hmm. it, it was sort of wide open. open. Mm -hmm. Open grassland with scat hills with forests just between hills and so on. Mm -hmm. Natural forest, yeah. But I enjoy I enjoyed the life. There was no pressure. Mm -hmm. We children we had food, we were growing it, we were goats, we were eating them. And from time to time we even would hunt and kill some anthropes and eat them. Wow. <laughs> so you so, didn't find that challenging, you found it. Yeah. I know it was not, it was no challenge. Mm -hmm. A challenge started coming when I started going to school. Mm -hmm. Wow! So you've spoken about um, how your father was a leader, and um, how about your mother? My mother was just a, what can I call her? A domestic wife, mm -hmm. growing crops, cooking, doing all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but my father, because he was, uh, you know, he was a chief in the in the kingdom. Mm. Wow. But but of course, the kingdom had been over, so overtaken, been taken over by the British. Yes. So his job was uh, carrying out what we used to call by law, mm. to ensure that people are, are, are heresy, mm. have latrines, uh, have clean houses. Uh, don't fight. If they fought, they would arrest them, take them to prison at the Gobora headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the education, mm -hmm. the education, the so churches. Job to make sure that the children go to school. Wow. Although I didn't go to school myself until I was 11. Um, <laughs> so that was the, the main job of the chief. Mm -hmm. He was a real corroborate to ensure that he's, he's implementing instructions from, from, from above, from the British, mm -hmm. through the kingdom setup. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, interesting. Yeah. So um, but, you, you, you put, you've given a, a, a note about how you started education at the age of 11. But before um, we go there, did you learn anything from your father's leadership at the time when you were, uh, when you were a young child was did you learn from it were you inspired from it are there things he did that made you say i want to be like this? at that time almost you don't uh, take inspiration you watch and you mm -hmm. your life goes on 
but when I recall now, when I go backwards to think about it, mm. uh, it was it, 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 it was good. He was he was a leader. He was a local leader. He was really a leader, and a leader, <laughs> very faithful leaders. Mm. You can imagine. If you collect tax, they were collecting tax by oh. hand, just from people, tax to collect house, the, house. Yes, collected mm. cash. And you have to take it to Gomborora. Mm. If one shilling is missing, you are in prison. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you have to and, pay and for And it. there is no mask. <laughs> the Gomborora chief will put him in prison. Mm. Yeah? You, you know? Uh, so... Uh, but they were, they were working very hard and faithfully mm. and they were promoting our civilization. That's what I see. When I look back, mm. those people were doing very well. Education, Christianity, by law, mm. that is uh, discipline and manners and errors and, and all sorts of things. Mm. These days, which is not... That type of administration is available now in villages. Yes, yes. Everyone is on his own, on yes. her own. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, going to Perhaps about... what I can say about my parents, mm. uh, either it, it, it was uh, genetic or something, they were mm. poor people, very nice and highly disciplined. Uh, I were mannered. Mm. Even the, the grandparents I found, they were highly, highly, highly mannered. And, um, and when I look at my nature, sometimes I look at my nature and look at them, mm. there is some sort of resemblance. And no, in other words, we were brought up, there was no problem in bringing up. It was local at the level, mm. but they brought up their children the way they could, mm. were disciplined and were cultured. Uh, I have no regret with the past. After all, I may eventually regret through. So I have, uh, I, I, I look at it with amazement wow. and with and love. And we are thankful that uh, God yeah. gave your parents the strength and uh, mm -hmm. wherewithal mm -hmm. to raise you and, and your siblings. Now, on the point of education, why did you start your education at Israel? Now, it was my fourth. Mm -hmm. Because my father tried to force me to go. You know, at that time we had church schools. We didn't have primary schools as you have them. Because they were very few, they were scattered. Mm -hmm. the, the schools we had, I, I, the school I had in the vicinity was just a church school, mm -hmm. which has, is a church with one, well, one primary one. Oh. Just primary one. Wow. And it has A and B. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you would go for your, your education. From there, then you go to you go to another school with P two and so on. So each school uh, has uh, only one class. So I wow. went to that. Uh, I would go to that, but uh, I I was not enthusiastic mm -hmm. going to school. I would rather stay at home, uh, playing with other children. Mm -hmm. uh, and if a child didn't go, no, almost there was no bother. After all, the father wouldn't be there. Would be busy wow. uh, working, walking around in, in the in the parish. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is me who delayed. I didn't go to school. I didn't like going to school. Mm -hmm. But at the age of 11, a teacher, there is a teacher, just a, a, a church school teacher, who came and convinced my, my father, and my father this time convinced me in his presence that it was time to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I listened, then I accepted to go to school. Then when I started, that was that was it. But mm -hmm. I started school at the age of eleven. By the way, mm -hmm. when I went into the school, I was among the youngest. <laughs> and here I was worried that you were among the oldest. Don't think I started. <laughs> I was among the youngest. Mm. Yes, I was among the youngest. <laughs> the, 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 the children were. Big. Mm. Some of the new girls in P1 with breasts, big yeah. breasts. You could see they could marry and produce mm -hmm. children. Yeah. But that's how I started. That's how I started. Yeah. Went to that primary. Luckily, when I went to that church school mm. with two classrooms, mm. A and B, I would have gone to A 
spend a year, then go next year, go to P, spend a year, mm. then qualify to move from P1. Mm. But luckily when I started, God helped me. In second term, as we were finishing the second term, the teacher realized that actually I was brilliant. Mm. So, at the time he transferred me to P. And in P, I did uh, my examination and qualified to go to P2 in another school. That's how it is. And from there, the rest is history. Wow. So take us through uh, that, move. that journey of, um, or, or just a brief summary of your education. Primary, then secondary, which schools do yeah. you go to? Okay. And up to uh, your qualification. Okay, I, I, have to, I have to. Uh, uh, when I look at, uh, at the primary school, uh, mm. the education at that time was interesting. Mm. Now, at that time, we had what you would call vernacular teachers, mm -hmm. in addition to trained teachers. Mm -hmm. And vernacular teachers uh, taught in P1 and P2. Mm. And those who have studied English from uh, uh, teacher, teacher colleges mm -hmm. started in P3 and start teaching English in P3. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what I can be, 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 uh, remember. I went P1, finished it, got P2 another school, mm -hmm. and found the vernacular teacher. Mm -hmm. And we were being taught in Rinyankore, writing Rinyankore, writing wow. essays in Rinyankore, mm -hmm. uh, the ABCD in Rinyankore. Uh, what your stories, everything, religion uh, uh, sculpture in Rinyankore. Wow. Uh, if there is any history in Rinyankore. And the first English I learned was in P3, English word was in P3. <laughs> you can't believe it. Do you remember the first word you learned? Pain and book. <laughs> Pain and was it a struggle to uh, no to education struggle? is education mm -hmm. they said pen I learned it book I learned it pencil what by then we had started writing mm -hmm. names in we writing in Nyankore from P1 to P2 we are already writing mm -hmm. words and sentences even but in Nyankore now we start English when I look back, I wonder. Now, English, when we started, we had very good teachers. Mm -hmm. Kakova uh, Teacher Training College, primary t t t teaching, what do you call it? Uh, primary Teachers College. Mm -hmm. Was producing very good teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I w we started English. Where, uh, Probably what I can tell you from P2, now I have come from a different school. Mm -hmm. I have gone to P2, I enjoyed studies. Because from P2, and some of my classmates are still there, from P2, each term, mm -hmm. I was one, meeting the children mm -hmm. up to P6, the time of living. Wow. So I enjoyed studies, I enjoyed getting things quickly. You are the, the, yeah? most, the geniuses of the class. <laughs> <laughs> at that level, you know, in our school, <laughs> at that level. Mm -hmm. So I think I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed the learning really. Mm -hmm. And I remember our primary was stopping at primary six. And we used to have um, annual speech, the school speech days. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we, we call, they call parents at the end of the year, then we do games, then read, read, read telling stories before children to the parents. Mm -hmm. Then the teachers reading who has done what, the best, blah, 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 blah. But I remember in P6 as we were preparing to live, mm -hmm. we played, a, 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 we acted a play. Mm -hmm in English mm -hmm. called Dionysius, King Dionysius of Greece. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you go to if you go to to, to Google mm -hmm. and you say Dionysius of Greece you can find his story we played that in English. Wow. And there, there were three characters, I was one of them. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the other two, one is dead, another one is the character is still there. Professor Baranga was in Baranga University. Mm. So uh, at that time, by P6, arithmetic was okay with me, English was okay with me, mm -hmm. and uh, now I, I think I was becoming, uh, for, from there, I did not have problems with education. Mm -hmm. Okay, the problem was first, of course, although my father was a chief, but mm -hmm. money was not there, mm -hmm. you are paying two shillings school fees in the school. Two shillings. Two shillings, and you are dismissed. Uh, not dismissed, <laughs> but sent home <laughs> to go and look again. <laughs> Well, those those incidents make me laugh. Yeah. You can equate it to this term, how much is two shillings in our currency right now? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, it could be, <laughs> it could be probably <laughs> 50,000 shillings. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. because uh, <laughs> those who pay school fees in primary mm. can't pay 50,000. Yes, yes. And we couldn't pay two shillings. Yes. They are equivalent. They are equivalent. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, we were two shillings. I remember at that time my father bought a bicycle. Mm. New. Mm. Brand new at 21 shillings. So you can see the value. Yes, yes. Yeah, 21 shillings. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 That's so, so that's uh, primary easy. school, I mm. finished it mm. and passed well. Went to what we call junior secondary school. Now, junior secondary school, there were two classes equivalent to what you would call it. It, it was junior secondary from primary, junior, junior one and junior secondary two. Mm. Then you would go to another school that says, junior, say you senior secondary one. Mm. You, for you, you didn't study, you didn't mm. study that. That was a long process. It was, though, junior, junior one and two mm. were killed. Junior one became P7. And uh, junior two disappeared. Mm -hmm. Senior one remained in secondary school. That's why we say senior secondary, although there is oh, no junior second. We sense. used to have junior second. Junior second. It yes. was killed, removed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, uh, I went to Chunoni, Chunoni Zeno Ruampara. Mm -hmm. We had a junior secondary school there, mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a resident, two years. I completed well. Then I passed going to senior one to senior four, mm -hmm. which was in Barra High School. I think but the second school in Barra High School as a second school mm -hmm. was about uh, yes. it was about one year old. Mm -hmm. wow. It had been a junior second school before. Yes, yes. Now it is a second school. I am the second intake. Where mm -hmm. we have heard of mm -hmm. It was the first in uh, in the, in the, but wow. me and Karanga and Kutesa mm -hmm. were classmates in that, in mm -hmm. Barara High School. Second, we, we were the, the second intake of Barara High School. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I studied sciences, but those are what I, I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, mm -hmm. uh, in, and some English, geography. Mm -hmm. Tuare, history, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a fan of And it, it has become a tradition, even my children, the type, the same type. They are also scientists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I, except that when in senior second school, remember mm. our schools at that time, again, it is a British system. Mm. At that time, we know we, we have a syllabus which is set at from Cambridge. Mm -hmm. A syllabus, syllabus, syllabus. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Exams set by Cambridge yes. University or the, the body there. Yes. And then they examined, they examined there. Mm -hmm. we, we, we were not examined locally. Yes. Yeah. We were British. Yes. Our teachers, 40 teachers, mm -hmm. we had only three Africans. What? They were all Europeans. Wow. The English you speak are, are English, not mm -hmm. American. <laughs> yes, For you, you slang. speak American. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
Yeah. <laughs> For example, you say, I have gotten. No, mm. English is not that. Mm. You say, I have got. Yes. It's G O T, yes. not gotten. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, I think I enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, uh, we had a scripture union, mm. very exciting because in Bar High School is mm. best is best at the at the Cathedral for church, okay, current the Church of Uganda. Yes. It is a, it is a missionary school. It was a missionary school. Mm. So school picture union was at its best when mm -hmm. we were there, and I was a member. I enjoyed that. We are used to be sent by the headmaster to to uh, school picture union gatherings during all days. Mm -hmm. We would gather at Bordeaux at Nabumari, so you can imagine traveling yes. at, at that uh, age of traveling to for school picture union meetings and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I think we would say we were, we were religious, not very religious, mm. but we, we were well behaved. I cannot say that I accepted Jesus Christ, no. Mm. I was a member of scripture, powerful, following. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did that work out? Mm? How, and uh, highly obedient and highly loved by the people. How God. would you, uh, that, that's strange because how would you pray without, if you're not born again, uh, uh, how, who are you praying yeah, it to? Is, it, it is a culture of stew <laughs> youth. <laughs> <laughs> they are being uh, sort of mm. bent to, be, to, to move towards Christianity, you yes. know. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, but, and they are Zug, mm. you know. Uh, so, and the headmaster was that type of the sculpture in your mind. Mm. I, I had a good time. Another one which I learned there, another Muslim was uh, interested in nature. Mm. He, he brought us a, a naturalist club mm. and he used to take us to national parks, wow. drive a, a group of us. We visited national parks, National Falls National Park, the wow. Falls, the in the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Mpuro was still mm. a, a sanctuary, more. Mm -hmm. and park, sanctuary, mm -hmm. so we would go visiting those areas, birds, and, you know, and up to today, I like nature, yeah. I love that it. That was with scripture union? Hmm? Was that with scripture union? No, that is another oh. part, another thing, yeah. another club. Yes. You can call it scripture union a club, yes. a naturalist club, oh. another one. Oh. Yeah. Where were these clubs anyway? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, those are the two things I enjoyed, yeah. apart from the education, yeah. but outside that. And from there, Scripture Union, I think, uh, indoctrinated me, although mm. I didn't say I was saved, mm. but it led to what I am today. Mm. Mm. Oh, I wow. think so. Interesting. Eventually, interesting. eventually I succumbed. Succumbed. <laughs> and after the break, you're going to let us know how you succumbed to salvation. But at this juncture, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we shall continue with uh, Mr. John Magara, who is going to tell us much more about his life story. Uh, this is Church of Uganda Family TV. Don't go anywhere. Do you know that you can now enjoy great enriching shows anywhere through the Family TV app? Here is how to download it. Open Play Store on your phone. Search for the Family TV app. Click Install. After installing it, open it and enjoy enriching content anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Family TV. Enriching lights. The starting point of your surgery when they say attention and you hold your legs, you have made yourself a soldier. Then I said, Now I know you want me to get saved, so I am going to, to get saved, but give me time. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine telling God where if you ask him for something, can you imagine him telling you, give me time? I praise God that I was condemned. Because if I wasn't condemned by man, then consequently I would have been condemned by God. But because of that human condemnation, that led me to my salvation. 
Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is my story at Church of Uganda Family TV. My name is Bruno Edgar and I'm here with Mr. John Magara who is telling us his life story and uh, it's very interesting so far. Um, for those of you who might have just joined us, he was telling us about how um, he grew up in the village deep, deep down before it was in Barra City. It was a Kole Kingdom at the time and he was telling us how he joined school at the age of 11 and how um, he continued to prosper in school. So um, we left at the point of secondary school. Now you're going to take us through um, secondary school and how you were ushered in into university and what yes. happened while you were at the By university. By the way, um, I must appreciate whether at all level, mm. all level, our school fees was 500 shillings per annum per year. Wow. I wouldn't have paid that, that was too much. Mm -hmm. But the Ankwere Kingdom was giving plenty of scholarship. Mm -hmm. And out of 500 shillings, they gave me 480. Mm -hmm. So I paid only 20 mm -hmm. per year for four years. That's how I managed education. Wow. Now, when I passed, I passed very well. Mm -hmm. I went to Busoga College in Irene, Busoga. Uh, for HSC, I took sciences, chemistry, physics, and biology. Mm. Now, the Ankore Kingdom paid all the fees 100%. Wow. So, I didn't have any problem with wow. the school fees. We were traveling in the bus, in, in bus and we had bus warrants, mm. uh, where the, the government, I think, would pay 75%. Wow. So, you can see life started becoming Easier. Easy. At this time, now the parents are not bothered mm. with us. Okay, uh, uh, from Soka College of Muiri, HSC, <coughs> I passed well, mm. went to Makiri University. Mm. Now I, I chose uh, sciences, I could have done medicine, but I didn't spend all my time so operating people what so <laughs> you did say yourself having mm, let, let me go to agriculture oh, it's because you did not spend the five years yes <laughs> so i went to agriculture yes. uh, agriculture uh, good good enough mm. they were paying everything wow. we, we didn't know what our education cost us we don't know we don't know yes mm. Uh, what we knew, they would even give us allowances, mm. what we called boom. Mm. They give you money, you buy musical instruments, you do what, you mm. all sorts of things. And you are rich, you are already a man. Mm. Uh, well. So, I don't know how you suffered, but uh, <laughs> university well, life. But for us, it, it was gorgeous. It was, it was nice. I took agriculture. Mm. I eventually, uh, I graduated. Now, um, uh, did, taking agriculture, does, is that connected to your background of um, hunting or, or growing crops back at home while you were growing up? Do you think it's uh, uh, Yeah, the they are related to nature and mm. what and crops and yes. all sorts of things. Mm. I, I, I liked agriculture. And um, so, but, uh, so I was employed by the government again in what we used to call Namurongi Cotton Research Station mm. uh, after Gayaza. Mm. That's why I, uh, I was uh, employed. Mm. Uh, now in the line of entomology. Entomology is the study of insects. Oh, wow. But now we are talking of agricultural entomology. Mm. Crop pests, crop insect pests. Mm. That is the line I took. Mm. Uh, so I worked there for seven years as a civil servant. Mm -hmm. I want to be brief. Yes. Now, when I was there, I looked back. I, left, I had left there a, a girl. She was two years behind. Mm -hmm. I said, mm. In the university? <laughs> yeah. Yes. This girl is, is there. Why can't I go and start? I, I, I had not taken interest, <laughs> but I remember that she was a good girl. Mm -hmm. so I you were friends at the university? We, we, sort of casual. I went and said, ah, oh, my friend. Mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> my friend said, what are you saying? 
<laughs> now the rest is history. Yes. <laughs> so my wife was I was picked from from Africa Hall. Wow. I was in Livingstone Hall, mm -hmm. Africa Hall. So uh, eventually we married when I was there. Um, mm -hmm. We produced, I think, our first two children there. Now, luckily, as I pursued research, mm -hmm. entomological research, mm -hmm. luckily, I collected enough data mm -hmm. that enabled me to take to Makerere and they honor me with a Master of Science wow. in agriculture. So I have an MSc wow. in agriculture. Yeah. Now, when I, have go, I had got uh, an MSc in 1980, mm -hmm. offered by Benaisa. Benaisa was the president then who graduated me, mm -hmm. um, I left mm -hmm. and went to a, a private company, Kemco company, which was selling uh, agricultural products for control of insects. I was now their representative mm -hmm. in Uganda, a company called Sibagig from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I worked with them for five years. Then an opportunity came. There was a government or, or a, a government organization called mm -hmm. Desert Locust Control Organization um, that is in charge of making sure that the locusts don't bother East Africa again, our, country. our mm -hmm. country again. So I was employed by that organization uh, as, a, as a, uh, uh, what you call it, professional man. Mm -hmm. I was the manager for Uganda, mm -hmm. in Uganda. There were 10 countries. It is, it is still there an organization of Eastern, 10 Eastern, Eastern, uh, East African countries mm. from Ethiopia to Tanzania. Mm. So I was there for 17 years. Wow. Um, uh, after 17 years, I became 60, 18 years, I became 60 and retired. Oh, wow. Uh, with that lady, I, I think we had. Uh, we, we did very well, mm -hmm. a, a nice couple, mm -hmm. where we had discipline here, she herself was disciplined, and I disciplined. Uh, 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 but uh, but I, point, the question what? of salvation is not yet. Mm, but, but before we go there on that point, what attracted you to her? What made you say, ah, there's, I'm here working, I'm sure there were many options. Uh, no, the question of marriage uh, came. Yes. The mm. question of needing a wife came. Mm. as I was working. Mm -hmm. Now I could see it, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to run around with girls. Yes. I was a, a person also very choosy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's very dangerous. You know, you're, I said, you're in such a this is, where there are I of... must marry now. Because mm. my father had a wife, and they were fine. Mm. Why can't I have a wife and also produce children? Yes. But yeah, I saw the girl. The girl I had, we were there, walking from Livingstone and Africa. They are about the same place, and you are walking together to to Fakar Tova You are always walking there, walking, walking. Hello, 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 hello. Where are you? I'm from Metoma. Hey, you, Kasari. Hey, how is Metoma? Mm, that type of business, yeah. and with nothing. To, but later on, he said, Hey, I need a wife. But is that a good wife? So I, I approached her. So, but yeah. what particular attribute about her attracted you to her? See, yeah. and, and and did you have any other options? Are you look at anyone else? She was the only one. No, she was, I, I saw her. Mm -hmm. She was cool. Mm -hmm. She was a, a cool lady, mannered. Mm -hmm. Call it mannered. Mm -hmm. What can I call it? Cultured. Culture. We, we used to use those words in in, yeah. in school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cultured. The way you, somebody's talking, yeah. and she was actually also sort of religious, mm -hmm. not a Moroccore, mm -hmm. but you can, you can see the behavior. Is, uh, by the way, our girls at that time, they were looked at they were as angels, university girls. <laughs> university girls were steady, yes. not current ones, probably. <laughs> university girls were admirable. And uh, even you could try a girl and you, 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 she refuses you because there, there were other people hunting them. Yes, there were better suitors. <laughs> yes. yes. But uh, yeah, me, I insisted also. Papa, 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 of course not easy. You are rejected. Mm. There is a rejection. How many also. times did she reject you? Mm, many times. Probably four or five. Wow. Uh, 
So you had the resilience <laughs> to persist. Yeah. For how long did you yeah. pursue before she finally said? Probably a yeah. year. Wow. Yeah, and when wow. she said, okay, I understand you, mm. but you are here bothering me. What do you want? <laughs> 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 So, ah, she accepted mm. to be my girlfriend proper. And also she accepted to come and visit me at, at work mm. when she was still at the university mm. from time to time. Now you know what happens, of course. Mm. <laughs> More she becomes your wife, yes. she starts visiting you. Visiting. Then you are locked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is that. <laughs> so after how long did you uh, now go into the marriage proceedings? Actually, actually, after we had to produce our first child, mm. uh, our first child, mm. we went into wedding. Mm. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, then I lost her. Oh. That's why I said I, I have married twice. Yes. In fact, I can briefly talk, talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost her, I think, in 2000. We married in 1975. Mm -hmm. I lost her in 2000. I, we already had five children. Mm -hmm. One girl, the first one, and four boys. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you call it? Pneumonia attacked mm -hmm. her, and the, 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 the doctors couldn't control it, and she died suddenly, almost suddenly. So, I lost her. Um, then, by then, I was active in the church, mm -hmm. and I had got saved, actually. Mm -hmm. um, this is, we are talking of 2000, I got saved in 1988. Wow. 1988, when I was working in that Desert Rockers Control Organization for East Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I was flying from Nairobi, uh, from Kampala to Nairobi, mm -hmm. Then an aircraft lost height, lost the just the aircraft you were in. Hey, 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 passenger aircraft. Oh, they do it. They do it, and then you know they, we were drinking tea with this blast of fair. <laughs> and also my heart was almost sunk. Mm. Yeah, okay. Eventually we came out of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just on a sudden, whoa! Mm -hmm. uh, but we, I went to the hotel and slept. And when I woke up, I phoned, I, the stomach was running. Mm -hmm. I phoned, I was vomiting. I phoned, wow! I said, hey, I'm dying! <laughs> 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 now I cried, I said, Jesus, I'm dying! Jesus, please save me! Please save me! I'm dying! I don't want to die with sin! Then, I, I, that was about two, two o'clock. Mm. Then it, it seemed as if it went down. But then it continued. Then I said, oh, we thank you for saving me, but can't you save my life so that I have a story to tell? <laughs> <laughs> huh? mm. Do you know in the morning, mm -hmm. in the hotel, when they took me to a clinic, I was examined. They said, you have nothing. You have money. You are OK. Mm. <laughs> Diarrhea, vomiting. Eh? Mm. And say, me, I'm not sick. Mm. Said, so I am, uh, since God has saved me, so I, had, I, I gave up to you, but I cannot give up. Mm. When I came back, I was already active in all, all sense casino. Yes. I came and gave the, the story to the to our head of later there. I said, okay, he introduced me to the congregation mm -hmm. as a saved man. You, you, made, you made the confession while you were still uh, in, in the, the, hotel. the hotel. No, here yeah. yeah, I'm giving testimony now, I'm mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. So I was saved in the hotel. In the hotel, wow. I'm just giving testimony. Wow. So I was picked up by Christians, mm -hmm. I joined the city church service. And again, I have been, since then, I've been involved in the church. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's, that's interesting to hear about your uh, salvation mm. story. And when it comes to the uh, point of salvation, and, and the Bible clearly talks about it when Jesus says that um, 
we shall surely have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for we have overcome the world. Now, you talked about the loss, the loss of your wife. Um, if it's okay with you, can you take us through how you felt and what happened when you lost her? Now, when I lost her, I was already, what can I, grounded in North Saints Cathedral. Mm. I was everywhere. I was, in fact, should I call it love? Mm. The church was for me all over. Mm. The priests, the bishops, the Christians. And when we lost her, it was a disaster. Mm. And they saw it as a disaster. Magara went into disaster. Mm. Yeah? They could not imagine my wife. She was part of the mother's union. The father's union, she was part of them. You know, everything was good. Mm. By then, even I had, uh, uh, by, uh, yes, I had even become head of late there. I had already made, done so many things, mm. so many things in, the, in that church. Mm. It was sad, very sad moment, I can assure you, for the church. Mm. But, um, what got you through? But uh, then, while I was sleeping, the creation is said, Magara, you cannot stay without a wife as we know you. You must get a wife. And I didn't want to get, I have five children. How do I bring a, a, a woman <laughs> to these five children? And there are already some of the children. <laughs> yes, one has already finished the university. Mm -hmm. And even we are in to Zakum Ninja, mm -hmm. she's going to wow. wed. Mm -hmm. yeah. The mother left her when she was about to wed. Mm -hmm. The, you must work. And they started even bringing women to me to choose to marry. These are members of the church. The bishops. <laughs> the bishops. Oh, oh. If I mention their names, and you know them. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I will never forget that. Even the one I have, mm. still it was a priest who brought that to me. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know how. But eventually, I, I went through those women and I said, no. God, you must show me a wife so that if I marry her with these children. Mm -hmm. But eventually I quit when I said, mm, I think this is the one. Mm -hmm. She was also a widow. Mm -hmm. I was a widow. That's how it came to oh. be. But me with five children, for her with one child, a girl. Mm -hmm. said, I think with a girl and children, we, I think we can make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Poco Poco started. I won her, and she accepted. Oh, we had a great, very wonderful wedding, wedded by Nkoyo, the Archbishop himself. Wow. wow. And uh, her was assisted by Bishop Omari. Mm. And my, my, my best man was Bishop, uh, what do you call him, George Tvesukwa. Mm. Oh. Don't you think it was colorful? That was colorful. <laughs> <laughs> that was very colorful. Now, let me tell you a brief story how these children accepted me to marry. Mm. After getting this wife, mm. uh, now I had to tell the children to ask them to let me marry. Because mm. without marriage, I am nobody. I will get spoiled. So, children, so, mm. so I prepared them um, an evening mm. at the Garden, the garden somewhere, mm -hmm. and we had supper there. Five children we sat there, mm -hmm. and I introduced the subject that uh, I am interested in marriage. Mm -hmm. And my daughter said, "Yeah, I support you." After how long uh, between the, the loss of your first wife was this? When uh, it was when very fast, they go, because they, they, it was being driven by the church. Yes. Uh, two years only. Yes. Two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the boy said, no, we cannot accept another wife. The, mm. This one will disorganize us in our family. Mm. And this is very important. You don't accept it, but the boys... The boys, the four boys said, no. And the girl said, that don't marry. Mm. So we went into debate. Mm. We debated, I explained to them, if the advantages and disadvantages of if I marry, mm. and the advantages and the disadvantages if I don't marry, mm. including getting depressed and mm. useless and dying even before they are finished schools. Mm. Mm. So eventually they agreed mm. that I look for a wife and marry. I think this is what Christians should do in such circumstances. 
should pick. Mm. Don't just bring your wife to the children. Mm. Say, ah, this is, this is my new wife, take it <laughs> So off. my children gave me permission actually mm. to go and marry. And they said, you go and bring, if we get one wife, one woman, you bring her to us and we see her. Mm. And we have to see her character. Mm. We see if she will tolerate us. Mm. And you already had the, the woman anyway. Mm. So you invited her home. And they prepared her lunch, and uh, so they received her. She was there the whole day. We saw her off, and they said, Daddy, marry. Mm. This is a good wife. Mm. Do you see that? I see that. They gave me permission. the hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> after meeting her once. Yeah? After meeting her once. They yes, said, once. They said, no, the her character is good. Her mm. character is mm. good. Then she had a daughter who was in the university at that time. Uh, she brought her. They, they had jokes with her. Mm. Said, wow, what a girl. Mm -mm, this is our sister. Mm. And she said, hey, these are good children. These are my brothers and sister. Mm. How many children uh, did you have, you have with her now? Yeah? How many children do you have with her? With her? With, uh, yes, with mm. your new wife. Nothing. She was already beyond the child production. I was 57 and she was 46, mm. beating her by 11 years. That was one child production age. Mm. But now she took over my children, we yes. brought that one. Now we have six yeah, children. Now six children. Wow. Those six children have produced 10 grandchildren. Mm. That is that. Now, quickly, mm. probably, uh, how is my life? Mm. Uh, of course, I grew up, I grew old mm. as an employee. Mm. At the age of 60, I, I, I retired. Mm. Unfortunately, I retired with no pension. How come? That was an international organization. In mm. its conditions, there is no pension. There was no gratuity. Mm -hmm. 17 years we were being, they were renewing our, power, our, 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 our jobs mm -hmm. every three years. When they renew your job, they give you gratuity for these three years you have covered. Mm -hmm. So they give you that package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is going to school fees and doing other things. So you continue. At the end of the job, they will give you the, the, the gratuity mm -hmm. for that, those three years, mm. but there is no pension. no pension. Now you can see a family of, uh, you have uh, six oh, no, children, six. Mm. they are in school, more, 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 almost all of them, you have a new wife, oh, retired, mm. soon retired. Uh, that's how life started. So, but that's what it has been. Mm. Struggling now, remember, I have no experience in business. Mm. I have no. I have not served for business. Mm. I didn't know that I would be doing business. Mm. But um, that is just an example of what things can be. Yes. But of course, I had some money that gratuity. I started running around. What can I do? Go buy. Go all this real estate. Buy land. Somebody did sell it. People cheat you, they don't take you, don't pay you, all sorts of things. I even built a school to pray, a whole school, almost finished it. But unfortunately, it was the second school. If I had started a private school, it would survive. Mm. But then, with the rule that uh, to be licensed, the second school, you must have at least 17 teachers. Mm. Do you see that? Yes. 17 teachers. And uh, ABCD reported what, what, mm. what, 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 what. Now you, you call children, you have 17 children, seven teachers, the first year you have only 20 children. Oh. And most of them are seeking bursary. Oh. I mean, you know, support. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, then we sort of did talk. Mm. In other words, life has, like, has been up mm. today. Mm. It is a life of struggle. Mm. Yeah? But mm. we got hope in Jesus Christ. Mm. But I'm not bad off because luckily, we invested in children like you, mm. and some of them are, are, are aware of.
So when they send us some money, you find you have enough salary mm. to keep you going. Keep going. You and your wife <laughs> to in your house. <laughs> yes, well, that's interesting. And uh, uh, what you alluded to there is very powerful because uh, like I said, we have a lot of challenges in our lives yeah. and you, you have mentioned many challenges from growing up uh, in the village, from uh, losing your wife, from working for many years and not having pension. But you mentioned something critical there that there is hope in Christ. There is hope beyond affliction. That yeah. in Christ you can... Yeah. You that can one now, let me tell you, make a way. at the age of 77 now, mm. I find it would be embarrassing for mm. me. I have lived all these years. Mm. It would be embarrassing for me that I leave this world that go to hell. Mm. I don't want. Mm. I shall not go to hell. Mm. I have to walk yes. with Jesus all the time. Mm. I was 77 years, how many I left? Mm. Probably 10, probably 5, probably. Mm. And that, that is a very short period. Probably. I'm saying Maybe. no. Mm. Whatever I am doing, I must prepare to be with Jesus and uh, the Father after mm. here mm. and settle so down. Even if it, they are not there, mm. but at least I do my level best. You you are in a journey with Christ and you do not want to go to hell. Yeah. So what would you like your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered for in this life? To, to do what? To be remembered for. What do you want your legacy to be? I have, I, most of the time, mm. I have worked with colleagues, mm. especially at the church. Mm. Uh, those I have worked with know what I am. Mm. There are certain areas where I have been working. Mm. Quite enough, for example, I will give you an example. I have been head of late. Mm. Head of late, during our time, you had to guide Christians, mm. especially in discipline. Mm. You, you had in discipline, uh, Christian discipline, social discipline, you know. You had to ensure that the church is developing and you had to, 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 to make sure uh, that the property of the church is well protected. Mm. The finances, mm. I was head of it, that was his job. Mm. That was my job at that time. Mm. I think I did it, that section I did. Recently, at the casino, you hear we have even the seniors. Um, we are saying no. It is high time we have a, a guest house here. Mm. At all since casino, mm. wow. hmm? I have joined the group initiating it. We have mm. initiated one. It is ready. It has been taken up by council, mm. ready for construction. Even the land we have. Yes. These are the seniors now developing it. Wow. Hmm? Yes. I am there. Eh? Yes. When we, we finish the cathedral, they say next we'll be constructing um, a cathedral guest house. A guest house. Eh? So that we, we, we can accommodate our... You know, we have been traveling in evangelism with we seniors, evangelizing the world. We have gone to Rwanda, we have gone to Kenya, Mombasa, we have covered Uganda, evangelizing, you know, all sorts of things. In the, in the, in talking to elderly, to form elderly groups and so on. Okay. Preaching the gospel. So, uh, so your, your legacy has basically been like the word of God states that we have been anointed to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to yeah, deliver the oppressed, yeah, yes. to set the captives free, yeah. and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So, I am uh, happy that I have participated mm -hmm. in church activities and mm -hmm. I'm still active, uh, as participating in church activities. And we all the people, we have the church leadership which loves us. Mm. We have a church leadership which loves us, mm. from the provost to the councillors themselves. Mm. When we are there, we feel loved. And even in our weakness, we want to work mm. and initiate. Mm. And that's what we are. So that's a life of ministry and yeah. serving God. Yeah. And very quickly, um, what's the best advice you've ever received and what's the best advice that you can give us? and give uh, the viewers who are watching. Young people, young people, there are, there are so many changes that take place. Some of them, they take us 
uh, and prepared. What can I say when we they don't know? We are not aware. Yes. We don't know where we are going. Yes. And uh, I think if you can listen to us, we have been also young, mm. but sometimes the current young are more active than what we were when we were young. Mm. And um, uh, we find the, the, the youth have their what they call human rights, mm. and uh, not easy to advise sometimes. Mm. Uh, but I think the younger generations, they are vulnerable to all sorts of things. Mm. As individuals, I think it, it needs uh, individuals mm. sit down and say, actually, what is this world today? Mm. And how can we live in it? As I told you, I, my university school fees were paid by the government. By the government. But these days, uh, the, the fees are paid by the parent. Mm. And if that is the case, the parent has become government mm. with all these difficulties. So the parent becomes very important. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So I think we need to, the, the, the younger generation, you oh, value these older people. Mm. These older people, beginning with parents, with parents yes. value them. Honor our parents. Yeah, honor them. Mm. Value them. Listen to them, mm. and you see what can you, where you can go. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what I can say. Thank but but so most much. important, mm. let's focus on Jesus Christ Amen. and the cross. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. John McGrath, mm. for joining us this Sunday. Mm. And uh, we ask that we know that God will continue to use you, and may God richly bless you. Uh, my name is Bruno Edgard. I have been interviewing Mr. John Magara. This is my story every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. only on Church of Uganda Family TV. Catch us as well on Instagram, um, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as on YouTube. Download our app and you'll get the best of enriching content. See you next Sunday. The starting point of your surgery, when they say attention, and you hold your legs, you have made yourself a soldier. And I said, now I know you want me to get saved, so I am going to, to get saved, but give me time. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine telling God, if you ask him for something, can you imagine him telling you, give me time? I praise God that I was condemned, because if I wasn't condemned by man, then consequently I would have been condemned by God. But because of that human condemnation, that led me to my salvation.